Download the free CBS News app to watch. One more day. One more day. We have an opportunity to put an end to a presidency that's divided this nation. Tomorrow, we can put an end to a president that has failed to protect this nation. And tomorrow, we can put an end to a president that has fanned the flames of hate all across this country. You want to be represented by a career politician who hates you or by an outsider who will defend you like you have never been defended before. No administration has done more in the first three and a half years than we have. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. It's go time. It's go time. They'll win the hall for And we'll send them a signal like they've never seen before. We are going to win four more years in the White House. Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. President Trump and Joe Biden are making their final pitches to voters before Election Day. And like nearly everything else in this race, things could not look more different when you compare the campaigns. President Trump is flying around the country to hold packed rallies in key battleground states, much like the ones he held ahead of the 2016 election. You can see his five stops here in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania and North Carolina all states he won last time around. Meanwhile, Joe Biden started Monday in Ohio, where his team is seeing some last-minute hope and is spending the rest of the day in western Pennsylvania. Unlike the president, Biden is holding smaller drive-in rallies to allow for more distance between attendees. The different approaches to the campaign trail highlight a divide in this election. Here's a look at our CBS News battleground tracker. Joe Biden holds a more than two to one lead nationally among those who have already voted, while President Trump is doing almost equally as well among those planning to vote on Election Day. So where does that leave things? In our team's baseline scenario, Biden has a narrow electoral college edge with plenty of toss ups and lean states that could easily swing either direction. For President Trump to win, Republicans will need to see a turnout surge on Election Day to counteract their early vote deficit. That scenario looks something like this, leading to a narrow Trump victory. But it doesn't take much for it to break the other way, illustrating Republicans' precarious position. If Tuesday's turnout is decreased by an average of three percentage points from the baseline, Biden could be headed for an electoral college landslide. Caitlin Huey Burns and Nicole Killian join me now. Caitlin is CBS Sens political reporter with us from the battleground state of Pennsylvania. And Nicole is a CBS News 